Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna do some slip trailing. Let's go. like that. <laughs> Woo! We're having some fun here with some transitions and uh, we're getting ready to have some fun doing some slip trailing. Uh, I've got my three main colors of slip here that I use. I've got a, um, believe it or not, this is a white. I think uh, some of the slip inside has, uh, has uh, I don't know what happened, that it looks green around the edge. I think it kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think because when I clean it out all that comes out and I put white back in it and over time it turns green again on the edge so I don't know what that is but uh, either way is what it is I've got a uh, dark red slip here that I use and I've got what I call a black slip it just looks dark brown the uh, black and the red slip that I use actually have the same base uh, of a red slip and this one I just add a little bit more iron to and this one I add a little bit of manganese to so you could use any clay slip that you have actually take any clay that you wanted to and make a slip out of it if you just wet it down into a slip form or in a wet form um, and then uh, you could add some iron or some or some manganese to it and make that uh, these I do mix from scratch uh, and then the white as well is a different recipe but um, I mix that as well so anyhow we're gonna take the uh, two part vases that I made the other day uh, on the live stream and we're gonna do some slip decoration on these and just gonna do some random stuff because I don't have anything necessarily planned. I've got a couple ideas on some of them based on the way I've, I've kind of seen the way they turned out, but um, I don't have anything set in stone. So uh, here we go. <clears throat> I thought I would show you guys real quick the consistency that I mix these so that you can kind of see. I'm just gonna squirt a little bit out on my hand so that you can see. Um, there's kind of the consistency. Uh, they're all about the same, but I like it so that they don't, they don't run when I put them on a vertical surface, but at the same time I like them so that uh, it's wet enough that when I when I do a dot, it doesn't leave like a big, a pointy pot part on the dot because then that's going to be a sharp spot uh, when that slip dries. So I've got that. I need a sponge. There we go. Uh, red. Like I said, about the same consistency. The red is not quite as critical as far as not forming a, a dot on the top of the bump because the red and the black will both kind of like melt down in the kiln. They've got enough uh, iron in them that they will kind of like, uh, um, uh, when you get hot enough, they will melt down. The, the uh, black slip, like I said, same kind of consistency there. So you can see... There we go. We got all three there. I don't know if that was all in the center of the the, uh, the screen there, but that's the three slips. Uh, the thing I love about doing slip work is not only the results I get out of it, but uh, I love the way that the pots look with the slip on them before they're even fired. I just think it's a really neat look to the piece. I know that has nothing to do with the finished piece, but I just love seeing greenware pots with slip on them, and even bisfired pots with slip on them. I think it's just kind of the idea and how much potential is there for different things to happen with all this uh, extra work that you've put into a piece by adding slip of one form or another uh, to a pot. So I'm gonna grab a towel and we'll get started on this one. All right, what I've got planned for this one is mostly just white dots of varying sizes and I'm kinda of gonna cover the whole piece kinda of from here, uh, hopefully you can see that, sorry, I'll lift it up. Uh, the idea I have is for white dots of varying sizes to kind of cover the piece all the way from here down to where the shoulder kind of starts to spread out and then I'll kind of trickle those I'll trickle those dots out or kind of uh, decrease the amount of them as I get down close to that and they just kind of fade out into the pot that excuse me that's the goal I've got for this one I've got the hiccups or something so anyway so we're gonna take the white and uh, I'll just try to hold this so you guys can see uh, what I'm working on here, uh, of course, most of the time I do this facing me, not facing the camera. But I'm just going to do random dots of different sizes, uh, kind of all over the piece. 
up in this area here and then I'll work my way down uh, as we kind of do a, a I guess I should go all the way down to begin with and then uh, rotate the pot and then uh, do the rest of them the tricky part will be as I rotate this is to not put my hand up there and touch the wet dots that are on the back side once it gets turned all the way around because then we'll make a mess and we'll have to clean the whole thing off and start over because if you mess up a, a, a big portion of this or put your hand into it, there's really no way of cleaning just a couple dots off and, and going back and replacing them. At least I haven't really encountered a way that that was easy to do. Every once in a while I get going a little too fast and I get two dots that are connected together. That doesn't bother me too bad. Uh, although I could come back later when those, <coughs> <dry> <coughs> excuse me, when those dry a little bit and uh, just take a... Um, a knife of some kind and kind of scratch a little bit of that slip off. That's that's one easy way to do that. Uh, most of the time I just leave it though. there we go now that we've got the dots kind of all up in this area here I'm gonna set the pot down and I'm actually gonna work on that collar there and kind of fade out the dots I think that'll be a little easier to do if I set it down on the wheel and look at it that way There we go, I think that's good. Some of these small dots down here at the bottom may not even show up in the end, uh, but it'll just either way, gonna help fade that out. And uh, depending on what glaze I put over top of that, we're gonna get uh, all kinds of interaction around those dots and then uh, uh, kind of flowing down from there. So there's the first one. All right, some of these I'm actually going to uh, spin the wheel to do some of the decoration. Like this one, I'm gonna put some of the red slip on the, on the rim of it smooth that out or flatten that out with my finger to kind of cover the whole rim. Uh, then I'm going to take this little lip that's right here and I'm actually going to put a line of red slip on that uh, rim to kind of accentuate it. And then uh, from there, let's see, I think I'll just put some, uh, some red dots. Um, hmm, I'm not sure if I want to put some red dots up in there or not. I actually might just do some kind of like right in here as, as a little V. Uh, we'll start with putting one there. Try to go straight up, spacing these out fairly evenly. And then um, see if we can do this. This is not the normal, normal way that I, that I put dots on. But uh, if we can make this work. It just might I actually made a diamond there I don't know that's that's kind of cool actually I didn't think about that but I stopped instead of going all the way up I just did the diamond so let's flip it around we'll do that as well on this side so we got four straight down the middle There we go, there's another diamond on that side. So I'll probably do my dark blue glaze over top of that and it inter interacts really well with this red slip. And uh, so there, I believe, I believe that one's done there.
I've actually never done that before, so you got to see it first here. And I believe I'll definitely play around with that some more, the way I uh, ran that down. Um, kept holding it and just running that down. I think that's going to be cool. So we'll, I'll definitely share that with you guys when it's finished, what it looks like. But uh, I'm excited about that, see what happens. I'll tell you, one of the big tips working with slip is to have uh, kind of like, depending on what kind of slip work you're doing, but to do steady, confident strokes is a big one. Uh, like especially right here, I was going to try spinning the wheel and kind of looping the, the slip kind of round as I go around. And to do that, you really have to have steady pressure on the slip. The slip needs to be very consistent and it's uh, a very con uh, consistent. Its consistency needs to be consistent. Is that Do I need to say that twice? I don't know. But either way, the, the consistency needs to be very smooth uh, and you need to have pretty a pretty full slip bottle so that it doesn't run out or, or burp or, or spit. Uh, but uh, you'll see as this, as this goes, I'm not going to spin it very fast, but as I go, I'm going to kind of hold the slip bottle and do some motions like that to get, uh, to get a design on this one. So there we go, got that. And then uh, what I might do is I might put some, uh, I might highlight around that with another color slip. I might, uh, after this dries a little bit, I might actually come in with another color slip and, uh, and go around that or shadow that. So let's set this one aside and we'll come back to it. I'm actually going to add my uh, Rutile Blue Glaze on top of this and it interacts really well with this red slip and it also makes those white dots look real pearlescent so I'm excited about that one. This is actually a uh, clear glaze that we use uh, in uh, wood kiln sometimes, and uh, it actually looks good as dots as well. So I'm gonna put it, kind of uh, some random dots in and around this black slip. Now on to the potato or the drum or whatever we're calling this one. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I don't know what I'm doing. My wife actually saw a picture of it. She said, I like it. It's like, I don't know. I guess we'll see when it's finished. So uh, verdict's still out as far as I'm concerned what it's going to look like. But uh, we're going to have some fun here. But I called it a Dr. Seuss pot, right? What better way to celebrate a Dr. Seuss pot than with stripes? Whoops, nope, not dots. Not blobs, stripes, stripes. <laughs> now those won't stay as stripes at all because of the glaze that I'll pull over that will will make those all kind of all kind of run together and, and it'll be wild but it looks really cool right now doesn't it so uh, either way it's gonna be fun
right, now back to this one. And what we're gonna do, I don't know yet. I'm still kind of uh, thinking. I think I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm gonna come on this side and just kind of mirror it with this clear glaze. I really don't know what this is gonna look like either as far as I haven't really done this before. But uh, either way, it'll do something, right? I don't think I like that line. We're gonna wipe that off. All right, there we go. I think I like that. I definitely kind of I came down below each one of these three dots and added uh, those red slip dots coming down uh, and we'll see what happens with that I'm not a hundred percent sure how that'll turn out but uh, I mean I'm gonna add a uh, some red slip to the rim and I think we'll be done Well, there you go. I've got slip decoration on all nine of these that we made the other day in the live stream. But uh, I've got plenty more pots to put slip decoration on. But uh, just to give you guys a flavor and an idea of what goes in to uh, putting slip decoration on some of my pieces, uh, especially for wood fire, and I do a whole lot more slip decoration and, and just crazy designs on things. So I have a lot of fun, play around a lot, and that's like I said in my. Uh, in my rant, the other, I mean my vlog the other day, that's what I talked about. I talked about being creative. I talked about trying new things and trying different things. But also keep track of those things that you try. Write them down if you do something brand new. Uh, that way if it comes out really well, you can, re you can duplicate it, okay? So uh, anyway, I've got lots more to do. A lot more pots to put slip decoration on to get ready for this wood fire that's coming up in a couple weeks. But I'll probably also make a video of uh, probably of loading... Uh, maybe firing and unloading his kiln and then I'll show you uh, we're gonna be firing Joseph Sands kiln here in a couple weeks But then I'll show you the results of some of these after they come out I'll make a video and we'll kind of I'll show you the the, the results of uh, What happened with these after the all this slip kind of interacts with the glaze and melts and runs and all that stuff So anyway as always I hope this inspired you I hope it helped you and if it did inspire you go make some amazing pots and we'll see you in the next video Thank you for being here Woo. That's bright. I don't know how that looks on there, but it is bright. Alright. Ah, uh, and I need my microphone turned. Turn. Nope. Oh, gotta loosen it. Turn. Alright. Microphone is pointing at the ceiling. And that way, I'm gonna turn that down, because that's bright. All right, how is 50% brightness? All right, let's check. <laughs>